in the historical days of the prospectors, a hundred years ago, and to an extent in, in Argentina, where it's very under perspective, um, veins could be found at surface. Uh, they might be something that sits up as a ridge that you can follow for miles. Um, but for us um, in Extore, and, and similar to many of the other Argentinian explorers, the veins themselves do not show up that way. If you do have it at surface, then you might see the vein. It'll, it'll generally have very little gold. We use geophysics, and, and so do many of the other explorers around the world. The geophysics won't identify the gold in a vein, but it can identify the structure, the geological fault that might go for, in fact, in Argentina, they can go for tens of miles, these faults, and the magnetic features, and let's just back on that, what I mean by that is, everything on the earth is magnetic. All rocks are magnetic to a various degree. A tabletop is magnetic to some degree. And the earth's magnetic field is distorted by the rocks that are there. And when we measure, take measurements across the surface, and down there we take the measurements continuously every 150 feet or so across the projects on a grid pattern, we can measure distortions in that magnetic field, and where we see a low distortion, that leads often to what is a fault, and within the fault, we can interpret potential for gold. And we've been remarkably successful at doing that. It's using what we call ground magnetic surveying to pick up these low distortions in the magnetic field, which leads to faults, which we then drill. And we're not alone in doing that. Anglo Gold similarly has done that. Gold Corp has similarly done that, um, as has X Story. So it's using that technique as a primary tool. You can always, if it sticks out of the ground and it's carrying gold, it's easy. But for the most part, those discoveries were made 100 years ago.